What's really nice is when I read the news and I find an article that looks like I could have probably written it or an article that's actually better than anything I think I could write. And an example of this comes from New Eastern Outlook, which is a, a Moscow-based journal that I contribute to. But this is an article by Christopher Black, and it's titled U.S. Pressure on China, the Thai Connection. And what he's going to do is give his breakdown of what he sees going on in Thailand and surprise, uh, surprise, it looks exactly like what, what I have been saying, because that's what's actually happening in Thailand. The, the U.S. is backing opposition groups in Thailand, uh, partly to overthrow the government here, but it's also part of a wider strategy to encircle and contain China. And so uh, what I like here, though, is this breakdown down here. So I always go after the National Endowment for Democracy uh, because it, it is doing so much here in Thailand and these are the groups that are at the forefront. But Christopher Black goes through the Peace Corps. The US government funds more than 30 exchange programs in Thailand to connect Thai youth, students, educators, artists, athletes, and rising leaders to their counterparts in the US and the ASEAN region. Okay, so that's some of the cultural colonization that I've been talking about. Uh, there's also this right here. Thailand's alumni community from U.S. government programs is robust with more than 5,000 members hailing from the Fulbright program, International Visitors Leadership Program, the Young Southeast Asian Leadership Initiative, YSEALI, and other programs. The leadership initiative has grown to nearly 15,000 members in Thailand since its inception in 2013, 500 of whom have traveled to the U.S. and they should have added for indoctrination. Yes, of course. And then the USAID, uh, USAID does a lot of the same things that the National Endowment for Democracy does. As a matter of fact, several of the groups here in Thailand, like Prachatai, get money from USAID and from the National Endowment for Democracy, and in Christopher Black's article, he also points out from Open Society as well. And so 5,000, that doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think of 5,000 people who work their way into the media in Thailand, into government positions in Thailand, um, in, into industry, that's a lot of people leaning towards the West and, and identifying with Western interests more so than Thailand's interests, that, that group of people can do a lot of damage. We could already kind of see what that has done to the media here in Thailand and to some of the ministries here in Thailand. Uh, and if we go down, we're gonna see some uh, open society. And I like what Christopher Black has to say about open society. It's not opening it up for democracy, but opening up of national economies to the free flow of Western capital to make profit. That's exactly what open society means. It means opening every single country up just like a thief would want to open up every house on a block. Open the doors, make everything open, put all your valuables out onto the front lawn. Uh, that's what open society is really about. That's what people taking money from open society are helping contribute to. So I, I would be talking about in Thailand, Prachatai, I law who wants to rewrite the constitution of Thailand to make it kind of like Myanmar, where the U.S. backed proxies can just win every election and nobody else stands a chance because all the money is flowing in from the U.S. into the network, favoring uh, candidates who lean towards the West. Uh, so it is modern day colonization. This is what Christopher Black's article is talking about. This is what I've been writing about. Um, I Actually, this last part is, is also really good. Uh, these are a military theory paper written in 1999. These are Chinese generals. Uh, and he says, I believe advanced the idea that the first rule of unrestricted warfare is that there are no rules with nothing forbidden. 
They then examined the use of full spectrum warfare and why it is the only strategy to adopt in order to resist a powerful aggressor who does not obey international rules but makes up its own, such as the United States, which, as they point out, cannot even be trusted to obey its own rules. And this is a point that people in, in Thailand and other countries being targeted by the U.S. needs to understand. The U.S. cannot be reasoned with. They're not interested in peace, in friendship, in cooperation. They have demonstrated from one country to the next that they are willing to erase an entire civilization off of the map just to get what they want. They did it to Iraq, Libya. They tried to do it to Syria. Uh, they have disrupted life in Ukraine, stability in Ukraine. They had chaos in the streets of Hong Kong. They have chaos here in the streets of Bangkok. So uh, to think that you're going to reason with these people is a mistake. Understanding that uh, this is like a very low intensity form of warfare, hybrid warfare, if you will. Uh, once you understand that and then you start preparing yourself to fight against that, I think that's when you will start to see results. Uh, asking the U.S. to be nice is not going to work. Hasn't worked yet for any country anywhere. And I don't think Thailand will be the first example. So I thought that was a great article. Please help share this article. I'm going to put the link in the video description. I'm also going to pin it to the comment section at the top. Please share these articles. Uh, Facebook and Twitter have blocked and banned New Eastern Outlook. You can't even share articles from this journal on Facebook and Twitter. So please find another way to share it if you can uh, by email in other social media platforms that you might be using. I would really appreciate that. Christopher Black does a great job and I think his work deserves to be shared. Uh, to my Patreon patrons who make these videos possible, thank you so much. Uh, please like and share the video if you thought it was useful and please think about subscribing to my channel. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. And uh, thank you everyone who is helping me out day to day with everything. I really appreciate that. And as always, thank you for watching.